Have you just picked up Pioneers of Begonia and you're looking to make the best out of this game already in its early access state and get a, a sprawling looking island just like this? Well, if that's the case, this video is for you because we're going to be diving in and looking at every single different building in this game, how they work, how they interlock with each other, so you can make this sprawling civilization island and enjoy while you do it. Let's dive on in. So let's start at the basics, which is all about your wood cutting because that's one of what bare bones of any good kind of building game so what we've got here set up is a forester obviously foresters go out and they go and plant the forest for you you don't necessarily need them straight away but you will need them pretty quickly because they can plant all different types of wood what goes from softwood hardwood and also firewood obviously leading on to the forester goes into your wood cutter again one of the backbone buildings the woodcutter goes around and obviously chops down the wood, which sends it to your sawmill. Now, I'm not sure if that's a health and safety protocol right there, but um, we'll, we'll run with it. Now, the sawmill ultimately produces, we're going to just turn it all on for now. They're going to produce um, firewood. They're going to produce, if we have a look down at the bottom, softwood beams, hardwood boards, and also firewood as well. Firewood is used to obviously create fires and produce kind of for smelting. Um, and obviously the other word is wood is used for construction moving on to a bit more of the kind of resource gathering is you've got your miners so these first lot are kind of quarry people they work on just collecting stone so we've got an abundance of stone over here you can see if you hover over it it does tell you what you've got available and even better when you actually do click on something so for example we've got coal over here but if you weren't sure and you wanted to have a little glance where everything was you can click on coal hut for example and it does you can see highlight any kind of resource in white so it makes it really quite easy at a glance to see where exactly you need to build it now over here as well you do have limestone limestone is used for other kind of building materials um, which can be used towards our let's have a find them here we go the stone mill so limestone is used to create cement. Cement is used ultimately for the kind of bigger structures in the game and kind of later game operations. Uh, it does say staff income. They'll be here in a minute. We have also got our stone mason. Our stone mason does turn our normal stone into cut stone and also border stones. Cut stone again is used for our building blocks of the actual city itself. And the border stones are utilized to actually expand your area. We've actually, if you have a look at the map, we've pretty much taken over the whole map for this kind of little let's play and what I wanted to show you. Um, so we're not needing them anymore. I could actually turn it off to say, actually, you know what? I only want you to create cut stone for the building blocks. So some other mining materials we've got over here. We've got copper and coal. Again, copper can be used for kind of making, say, things such as uh, bronze swords. Coal is used. Now, coal is something you're going to find you need a lot of. And you're always going to need it. Because coal is used for burning, for creating. So you're going to want to find a lot of coal where possible. So lean on to mining. You're getting now into smelting. Now, smelting is used, if we have a look here, he is producing iron bars and silver bars. Now, both of these things are used for creating weapons and the things which you're going to need in your base if you want to kind of protect your island, protect your villagers from all those nasty enemies, what you can also get in this game. Two other types of resources you've got in this game is also silver and iron. Again, silver is very rare in this game. So you can't get to, well, you, you won't get too much of it from what I found so far when I played it. So you want to make sure whenever you're utilizing the silver, you're using it sparingly. It's used for kind of high power weapons such as silver swords. So make sure if you are getting it, don't just spend it, you know, on willy nilly because you can throw it into the mint. You can see over here. See, the mint produces coins and it increases your wealth, which the wealth then will help you befriend factions easier because they see you as someone a bit stronger and someone very wealthy. So you can see here, we are producing copper coins and silver coins, which is then thrown into the treasury. And that keeps them very safe. You can see the silver coins have a much higher value compared to the copper coins. Copper coins have one, silver coins have three. 
So again, you want to produce a fair amount, but at the same time, like I said, they can also be utilized for weapons. Now you might see everywhere I've got around is these little storage huts. Now storage huts can only hold one different item of storage. And you're going to want quite a lot of them. You can see this one's already full of flour. This one's full of iron ore. We've got pumpkins and we've also got corn as well. So you can never really have too much. And one little neat thing, what I haven't done on these ones, is you can set it to say what you want to store. So actually we thought about it. What we could have said is I want it to store either coins here or actually I want it to store coal. So that way the workers haven't got that far to travel to go and put more kind of in from the storage straight into the mint. So looking a little bit about food now is you've got foragers and you've got hunters. So foragers will go out and they'll go and foresty forage for food. You can see by clicking on it, it shows you what they're foraging for. So you've got a porcini and also you've got lots of raspberries over here as well. Uh, the hunters lodge, they go and as it sounds, they go and actually hunt animals. So you've got deer, you've got rabbits in the game. So again, they go in and get different types of meat. You can see down here, they can get rabbit meat, boar meat, deer meat, and they do get some leather as well, which is utilized towards some of the kind of armor in the game. Two more bits of food. The food chain is actually quite different, quite large in this game. There's quite a lot of different options. So right here, we've got a vegetable farm. Now the vegetable farm at present in the game, there's only two different vegetables you can grow, which is the pumpkins and you can do cabbages. Now, if you want to, you can just say you want it to do absolutely anything, or you can select what you want it to build. And by having a look at the actual farm fields itself, at the bottom right, you'll see the different land you're building on and what the, and what it's best for. So for example, right here, we're looking at a potential, I think that's corn and pumpkins. And if we look somewhere else, it could just be pumpkins and so forth. So you need to keep an eye on kind of where you're building to make sure you're producing as much yield as possible. Now, all farms always need a well close by as well, so they can utilize water to make sure they are obviously watering their plants. So one thing to bear in mind, you want to put a well quite close by. The other farm in the game is a crop farm. A bit more choice for crops. So you've got wheat, corn, and flax, I think is the three. Yep, there we go. Yeah, wheat, corn, and flax. Now, all these different things. So the corn can go straight into um, kind of food for the markets where the wheat needs to be produced into flour and then ultimately bread. The flax is used for creating different kind of in within the tailor. So creating different um, kind of materials, which we'll have a look at in just a moment. While we're on the subject of food, you have got a provisioner. Now, provisioners are quite important because they create rations out of the food you're creating. Now, you can see with regards to what rations do, is they are provided to your kind of explorers and people who are going to go around, explore the area and unfog the map. So you want to make sure you've got provisions available for them so they can go straight and explore and not have to wait for food to come in for them. Because if they're waiting for food, they're not going to go and explore and they're just going to sit there. Which is not very productive. So still moving along the food chain. So as mentioned, once you can start producing wheat, you can start producing flour. So as it sounds, it's pretty simple. Wheat gets turned into flour and then the flour is moved to the bakery. You can see again, the bakery is utilizing water and firewood. So again, wells and wood is a key thing to have here. Now food, what will happen from here is the food will need to be moved into a market stall, which you've got right here. Now I know what you're thinking, well everyone can just walk up to a market, but that's not how this game currently works. What you want is you want to have market stalls with abundance of food, which is then fed towards a tavern. Now a tavern will take these different types of food available and they'll turn it into nutritious meals, which are used for kind of mining, but it's also used as comfort. So what that basically means is if you've got cottages and residents, which you've got right next door, they house a certain amount of people. Cottages house 10, residents house 25 people. Now, if they're in range of the tavern, they can come and have a little sit down on one of the tavern tables you can put down. And it's quite flexible. You can put them quite far around. And this increases their comfort. Now, the higher the comfort, it gives them a chance to have potentially babies, which is going to increase your population. 
Now the more, the higher the population is, the higher it is to get your comfort. Right now, you can see at the top left, we've got nearly 2,000 population. So at the minute, you know, we're needing a quite high comfort. So I'm not that bothered because everyone is, to be fair, everyone is doing their job and we haven't got any kind of missing jobs at the moment. We do need a few more houses, you can see. We've got minus five on home, so we do need a few more houses, ideally. But right now, everyone is pretty happy. So moving into kind of starting to look at kind of tailoring and armor. So you've got the weaver shed. Now this uses the flax to create rope and also flax to create cloth. It's pretty basic, you don't have to queue anything up, but if you go and have a look at the tailor, the tailor utilizes a cloth and leather. So leather obviously from the hunter, and this can create light armor, padded armor, and also backpacks as well. So if you are looking at kind of creating an abundance of troops, it's, it's good to keep an eye on how much armor you're producing to make sure you're producing enough armor for them. You can set this to be indefinitely for all of them, or you can say you only want a certain amount. So for example, 10 light armor. What I tend to do is have kind of three tailor shops. I kind of have uh, try to have as many buildings as they produce possible in, and that way you can set kind of one shop or one kind of building to produce just one item. And I find that's a bit more um, productive because you don't have to worry about the game thinking right I want it to build light armor this time then maybe padded then back to light you can just say right just all light and the next building along I want you to do padded and so forth moving into a bit more higher level things now so we've got a guild hall guild hall is something you're going to probably have actually quite early on you can see I've set all of these things are set up set to a high priority but you don't have to do that for all but I've set these for now just so I can show you kind of a bit of the core mechanics of the game so with the guild hall, what will happen is if you've built a new item, so for example, you've built yourself a toolsmith and a new building, and they need right, they need to get some new um, kind of employees working in there. It will send a request to the guild hall to say, right, we need some new kind of um, kind of tailors or whoever that may be. And you can see they have a stock of different items available, and you got actually one guy right here who's just waiting. He's just waiting to be told right what do I want to do so for example if I wanted to make him into a builder you could just increase the builders right there like that to one and in a minute what you should see is he should turn himself or when someone comes along maybe not him but when someone comes along they will pick up the required equipment so for example this is a hammer which you can see on the floor somewhere I think it maybe is over there it's a giant hammer isn't it you pick up one of them he'll turn himself into a builder and that's done so if you find your things aren't building quick enough or you want a bit more um, you want more kind of diggers if things aren't going that way for you you can increase the amount of workers in this kind of menu here within the guild hall itself moving through the actual items itself what guild hall will need and as well as other things will need is a toolsmith again something you're going to want really early on in the game on one of my last playthroughs i find i didn't have this early on and i was really struggling for hammers, shovels and pickaxes. Pickaxes are obviously going to be used for all your mines. Hammers are going to be used for majority of items in kind of buildings within this game. So you want to focus on getting this up and running where possible. You can see at the bottom it utilizes wood, coal, copper and iron. But on each of the items you can see what it utilizes to build. So make sure, you, again, you can have multiple of these in kind of the main area. I've just set this up on a kind of far end of the map. But in the main base itself, I've got about three or four of these. Uh, at three, I think, and I've set each one to do just three um, kind of different items to build, just so it spreads out the load a little bit. Moving on, you've also got wood workshops. Wood workshops, again, create things such as hunting. So you've got hunting bows, you've got um, spears for your troops, torches for your troops and cogwheels as well which again is utilized for some of the higher level buildings so again something you want to get really quite early on in the game to make sure you are producing enough of these as possible now if you have a look at right at the top you can see you've got a menu bar what you can click on the different buttons which shows you what you've got or you can actually just set it to say i want to see for example let's go over here into mining so i want to see how many iron bars i've got so I've got 519, but it does give you an idea of what you've got and how much you need. 
So you can see right here, we're still missing about 102 iron bars we needed. So we're not producing enough iron. So that tells me we're going to probably need more smelting and also more kind of iron ore looking around as well. We've got a bit of silver back here, which is quite nice. The other kind of going into kind of weapons and armor now. So we're looking at the weaponsmith. The weaponsmith produces uh, all the way from bronze swords, sil iron swords, all the way up to silver blades. Silver blades are kind of high level items which are utilized to kill werewolves. Where you've got the bronze swords and iron swords which are more for just your soldiers and troops. And you've got iron lances which I believe are for fear noughts, but we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. The other two we got is um, armor smith. Well, we're we'll looking at the armor smith first again. Armor smith just does shields and chain mail, utilizes coal and iron for both these things. So again, that's what I mean when I said about you want to have an abundance of coal and iron. You always want it available just so you've got it, so you don't ever feel like you're in a pickle and you're struggling for what you need. Now the artisan blacksmith is a bit higher level. Again, this is utilized to make magic items. So you've got here, you've got the magic torches. And you've also got magic blades. Now, as it stands right now, I'm going to be very honest, and I've not found emeralds or rubies. Now, I've got a feeling it's going to be within trade of the game, but I've not actually touched on trade yet, so we'll have to do that on a later video. But for now, this will create like the much higher level items, uh, much higher troops in the game. Moving on to troops, you have got your military academy. Now, the military academy you can utilize to make guards, veteran guards. Guards are kind of your, your, your bare bones. You know, they go in guard towers and they sit around and they just, in essence, they just protect against bandits. So I think quite a quite low level. Um, they use wooden spears or if you want to get yourself a veteran once a bit more sturdy, you've got their iron lances and chain mail. Now, a neat thing is if you've recently built a new kind of watchtower, for example, it will show you here how many people you are missing. So it's much, really easy to see, right, I need to order five of them in or I need to order five uh, soldiers in, for example, just so you're not overspending and you're not putting too many people around. Because the problem is if you put too many, if you have too many kind of guards available, yes, it's nice to have a backup. But those people could be utilized towards something else. But also it means you're using up some of your weapons unnecessarily. You know, that means they're being produced unnecessarily. And they're doing a bit of a warm-up. Oh, no, there we go. They've just turned themselves into, I believe, some more guards. So there we go. Some lovely new guards. Thank you very much for joining. You've also got the Adventures Guild. Um, now, the Adventures Guild produce yet yeah, rangers who can take on thieves and they're the only ones who really can identify thieves and here you've also got the fear noughts as well we'll say we'll produce five of them where we can and we'll get five we haven't got any magic torches so we'll get five of them as well so the rangers mentioned will go against thieves and the fear noughts are your probably most strongest people in the game and as mentioned they go against the werewolves are which are probably the worst enemy in the game as well because if anyone gets bitten by a werewolf they turn into a werewolf and if you check out the video on your screen now you'll see how bad werewolves can get who's this my friend oh this is a, a fan or hello welcome 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 so looking at the actual um military itself we'll start on the right so you've got an explorer's hut something that you're going to get really early on in the game as mentioned they kind of go around they'll explore the area they'll unfog the map you can tell them you want to set a focus point. So, for example, if you want, if you see something over the hills over here, you think you might see a bit of iron or stone, you can say, right, I want you to go and explore that way. And now make sure they unfog that map bit first. A military camp is just somewhere for the military units to stay. That's, that's in essence, all they do. And then the final two, we've got a guard tower and a garrison. They both ultimately do the same thing, but the garrison can hold a lot more people, so they will protect the area they're in. Or again, you can tell them to patrol a certain area. So again, if you've got a big unit of bandits up here, you can say, right, I want you to patrol around there, please. Or if loads of people have just stormed into your base and they've somehow missed it all, you can again say, right, I want you to protect this area. I'm going to tell them to come down here. I want you to protect this area right here. You have got these claim points as well, and you'll find when you're expanding, when you're first kind of going into the game, you want to expand quite quickly. So you can put these near the kind of the borders of your map. Now what they'll do is they'll use these little border stones here, a bit like the old Settlers game if you remember that. They'll utilise those border stones to expand your territory and give you a lot more room to play with. 
So you can see here on the map, we've literally boxed in the only other person playing this game, which is obviously the AI at this stage. There's no kind of multiplayer at the minute in this game. So by having that, that you can expand as quick as you can. And you can see here, we've pretty much expanded over the whole map. And that's only because I keep setting these in the farthest points possible around the map to make sure we're expanding as quick as possible. The guard towers, you can utilize a lots of different types of people in here, all the way from fear noughts, rangers, soldiers, and guards. So if you see a band of thieves in one area of the map, you can think, right, I'm gonna put a guard tower there, but I'll make sure I put some rangers there. Or for example, if you see some veteran um, bandits, again, you can make sure you're putting soldiers in there. And there's quite a lot of detail you can see here. There's quite a lovely amount of detail on the unit. So you can see the veteran soldiers will look different to the rangers. The advanced soldiers, again, you can see the advanced soldier only has a wooden shield compared to the veteran one does have a an iron shield. So it's worth having a bit of a mixture because if you think the veteran soldiers aren't going to have the the best armor probably the best in the game but you're not going to start off with them so start basic and kind of work your way through it so the final kind of units you've got in this game is you've got the traders camp which holds traders and you've got a trading post as well now like i said i'll probably look at doing a separate video on the traders because i need to have a play around it to make sure i'm comfortable with how it works before i explain it to yourselves obviously i don't want to get it wrong bear in mind obviously if you've played this game already and you have you've kind of worked out how the trading post were make sure you, you make sure you comment down below and help those other players out now what you can achieve in this game is absolutely magical you can see here look at the size of this place we've built bear in mind you start with a little ship like this well i say little ship but quite a big ship and you start on a very basic bit of the island and you can absolutely if you play your cards right you can expand so massively and have so much going on you'll be a fear to reckon with my main tips for you if you're going to start off in this game like i said on this one you can see straight away i invested into stonemasons sawmills right at the start because i knew bare bone backbone of the game some cottages just to get some kind of people in and a bit of storage around in the areas as well i haven't actually set the storage to say anything in particular but maybe next time i will do that just for kind of items nearby so they're just dropping things straight off and then you just start expanding out. Bear in mind, you only start with a very small area and then you start expanding and expanding. So make sure you just keep pushing yourself further and further. And you can make yourself some very nice areas. Like over here, we've got a fantastic woodcutting area. So we've got lots of foresters down. We've got about six foresters to three woodcutters to make sure we're always planting more than we're cutting. We've got some sawmills right next door with, again, lots of uh, different storage, lots of wells for the foresters. We have a nice little place over here for people to eat and drink and be merry. We've got a little tavern in the middle uh, with lots of cottages and also residents around the outside with a little market as well. Just so, you know, it looks, you know, this game is absolutely gorgeous. So when you can do things like this, you know, it really takes your breath away. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this video and the run through of what you can actually get in the game so far. I'll make sure I keep doing these as the game expands and keeps going into more kind of complex things. I know obviously we are only in early access at this stage and most likely the devs, or well, I know the devs will be putting more things in the game such as fishing and things like that to look forward to in the near future and also underground mining from what I understand as well. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like down below. So make sure you comment any of your tips. Are you enjoying this game? Have you picked it up? Are you planning on picking it up? It is on Steam right now, so make sure you do check it out. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.